Martin, if there's any question that has formed my inner private being, it's how to explain the cosmos. And as a cosmologist, as someone who has looked at the cosmos and thought deeply about this, how do you feel in your private time at night when you think to yourself, how do I real, what do I really think it's all about? Well, I think even though I am professionally concerned with these huge domains of space and time, I still worry just as much about the everyday as anyone else. Um, but also, people somehow feel that the most difficult problems in science are in cosmology. But there are three frontiers of science, the very large and the very small, which we're trying to link together yes. in trying to understand the Big Bang, but also the very complex. And I think the greatest challenge in science is perhaps not in cosmology, but in understanding the great complexity of life here on Earth. And I often would say that to understand an insect is a greater challenge than to understand a star, because an insect has layer upon layer mm. of structure, whereas a star, because it's so big, is squeezed and heated so that all internal structure is destroyed. So stars are much easier to understand than the simplest living organism. Mm. And of course, the most complicated things to understand are we ourselves. But to see ourselves in a cosmic context is indeed important because one understands that we are the way we are because of the way atoms behave, the way they stick together to make molecules, etc. And we also know that we need to understand the stars to understand ourselves because it is the stars which made the atoms. We are the ashes of those long dead stars. And so there is this sort of unity between the very large and the very small and the very complex. And we need to understand this all and see it in the context of a cosmos which we can trace back to its dense amorphous beginnings and understand its future. So I think it's amazing we have made so much progress in understanding, but your question really triggers thoughts about how far we will get with our further understanding and whether there are some problems that we just would be flummoxed by forever. And it may well be that there are some limits which are set by simply our brains. Some th things, it may be the fundamental laws of nature in the micro world, it may be what's going on in our brains, it may be so complicated that we won't be able to understand them. Now, of course, our understanding is being augmented by computers, etc., uh, but that may help to some extent, but not enough. And so I think we have to bear in mind that when we talk about the limits of science, there are limits set by the fact that we haven't thought long and hard enough, we don't have enough technology, but there may also be limits set by the way our brains are constructed. And that, of course, is a limit for us as human scientists, but in the cosmic perspective, we've got to be aware that there may be in the far future, or indeed perhaps already somewhere else in the universe, intelligences with a greater grasp than ours or with a different perspective on reality from us. Your perspective of these three categories that need explanation and work together is, is marvelous. The very small on the atomic and subatomic level, the massive cosmological universe level, mm -hmm. and then complexity mm -hmm in between, mm. and that's where we are. And so we are the complexity, all life forms, especially us, in between, able to be, be formed from the stardust of the large and, and, and composed of the atoms of the small and mm -hmm. the complexity we're in between. So, so in order to answer the question, how do you explain the, you have to explain all three. That's right. We need to explain the complex, but also the other challenge, of course, to physicists is to unify the very large and the very small. The two great pillars of 20th century physics are, on the one hand, the quantum theory of the micro world, and on the other, Einstein's theory of gravity and the cosmos. Now, those two theories haven't been linked together, but it doesn't matter for most of science, because if you're doing atomic physics, 
or chemistry, you don't need to worry about the gravitational <laughs> force to, between the individual atoms. It's too small. On the other hand, if you're thinking about uh, planets or stars in their orbits, you don't need to worry about the quantum fuzziness in those orbits because they're so large. So science hasn't been held up by the fact that we don't have this unification of the cosmos and the micro world. But it is a challenge, and we need to surmount that challenge if we are to understand the beginning of our universe. Because when the universe was very, very small and dense, then quantum fluctuations, as it were, could shake the entire universe. And so to understand what banged and why it banged, we will need to have that theory. So that is one challenge, to unify the very large and the very small. But the other equal challenge, as you implied, is to understand the very complex of which we are part. And some have assumed that when you've uh, unified the very big and the very small, you've mm -hmm. solved the theory of everything and you can explain the cosmos. But even if you do that, you still have to deal with all the complexity in the middle. Oh, indeed. The challenge of complexity is quite, is, is completely separate. I mean, 99% of scientists aren't held up in the slightest by the lack of a unified theory of cosmos <laughs> and micro world. So that's why the phrase theory of everything is, uh, in my view, hubristic and misleading because <laughs> It is in a sense a theory of everything in that it would explain the fundamental laws. It would be the end of a quest that started with Newton, who told us that the force that holds us to the ground and makes the atom fall is the same as the force that holds the moon and planets in their orbits, and then Faraday unified electricity, magnetism, etc. So it would be the end of a certain style of science if we could unify all the forces, but it would not be relevant even to the study of complexity here on Earth. So that's a greater and quite separate challenge to science. How do you see the problem of consciousness in this picture? Is it a fundamental part of the problem, or is it just a sep one of many problems that would be nice to solve? Mm. Undoubtedly, understanding the brain is one of the greatest challenges in biology and in the whole of science, and consciousness is part of that. Um, the extent to which consciousness is something special which affects the way we relate to the external world, I don't know about. Some philosophers have speculated <laughs> about that, yeah. but I, I don't know. Um, but certainly, understanding the brain is going to be one of the greatest challenges. And also, of course, if we think ahead, we have to ask whether the developments in intelligence and understanding will come from unaided brains or organic material, or whether it will be computers, which already, of course, can surpass human capacities in some respects. As you look upon these three great categories mm -hmm. of explanation, the very small, the very large, and the complexity in the middle, do you see a contribution from philosophers or even theologians in helping us to understand the explanation of it all? I think philosophers can clarify some of the concepts, but I think it's very important that we should be prepared to accept uncertainty. Um, one of the reasons why I'm very skeptical of any dogmatic religion is that if science teaches me anything, it teaches me that even a single atom is fairly hard for most of us to understand. Mm -hmm. And that makes me very skeptical of anyone who claims to have more than a very incomplete or metaphorical understanding of any deep aspect of reality. And so I'm very skeptical of people who claim uh, to have easy answers that come from non-scientific methods. I think we have to share the mystery and wonder of the universe with people who think of the universe in a non-scientific way, but I don't believe that non-scientific modes of thought can actually add to our understanding. 